We got our first snowfall of the season here at the National Scouting Museum this week, so it seems like a great time to talk more about jackets produced by and for the BSA. As promised, it's time to tell the story behind the traditional red jack and other similar wool shirts and jackets in this edition of Artifact of the Week. The humble beginnings of the traditional red jack wool shirt got its start at Philmont Scout Ranch. When Chief Scout Executive Dr. E.K. Fretwell visited the ranch in 1944 and talked with Minor Huffman, Philmont's general manager, about the idea of an outdoorsman shirt to become a part of the official uniform of the BSA. Fretwell was looking for a distinguishing item of clothing that was appropriate for a western ranch and could be presented to BSA executives for wear in the field. The earliest version was a red wool shirt with square patch pockets in the front, button flaps, and black buttons. Soon after this discussion, Fretwell sent Huffman a red shirt and told him he was looking for an emblem to put on the shirt. Fretwell directed Huffman to trace the artwork in the entryway from the auto court to the Villa Filmante as a possible patch for these shirts. Huffman complied and the outline of the bull was filled in with black, which contrasted well with the red shirt. The Philmont Bull Emblem was born. On a subsequent visit to Philmont, Fretwell presented Huffman's wife, Dina May, a red shirt with a white bull, which seemed to be much more appropriate for the ladies, according to Huffman. The initial production of Fretwell's red shirt was purchased from J.A. Brewster of Camden, Maine, and were made of a high-quality wool material. Another early adopter of the Philmont shirt was James Fitch. Fitch was a Region 9 scout executive covering New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas during the time of Wade Phillips' donation of Philmont and Phil Tower to the BSA. Fitch went from being the Region 9 scout executive to the position of general manager of Phillips' properties, which included both Philmont and the Phil Tower building in Tulsa from 1945 to the early 1950s when he retired. Because the Philmont shirt was a little bit more lightweight than the current red jack, Fitch wore it tucked into his pants, more like a shirt than like a coat or a jacket. In August 1946, Fretwell gave each of the BSA regional executives one of the red shirts with the bull patch on it above the left pocket. The red shirt with the bull patch became known as the Philmont shirt. In 1949, the BSA partnered with Woolrich, a Pennsylvania company known as the original outdoor clothing company, to develop several wool jackets for the BSA. The first jack shirt design developed was a green wool jacket known as the Scout Executive Jacket and was intended for the professional staff, particularly the Council Scout Executive, to be provided as an incentive or reward for professional performance and to set him apart from other BSA professionals. 600 of these jackets were ordered from Woolrich. In 1952, Woolrich designed another green jacket for the BSA. This time it was intended for both professionals and volunteers alike. By the mid-50s, the BSA had accepted that design but feared the organizers of the Masters Golf Tournament might object to this green jacket and the BSA was also implementing a new color scheme to identify its programs through and the green Scout Executive Jacket was gone by 1958. With the removal of the green jacket, the BSA asked Woolrich to develop a unique wool jacket for scouts and scouters attending Philmont. The result was a 100% wool red jack shirt. Not quite a jacket, but more than a shirt. And it was a hit from the very beginning. In the 1960s, the red jack as it came to be known went from 100% wool to a wool polyester blend. In the 1970s, the Red Jack went back to being 100% wool, but was treated with Scotchgard for stain resistance. Along the way, the Order of the Arrow adopted the Red Jack as part of their official uniform for members of the OA. And with the founding of the National Eagle Scout Association in 1972, the Red Jack was also adopted by NISA as part of their official uniform for their members. Hoping to capitalize on this popularity, the BSA introduced a blue version of the jack shirt for exploring leaders. The new blue jack shirt was introduced at the 1973 National Explorer President's Congress, along with a corresponding 8-inch back patch. Now, unfortunately, the explorers were not interested in wearing anything which looked like scouting. In addition, the BSA just changed the color of the dye from red to blue and swapped out the red buttons for blue buttons. 
They also failed to change out the tag inside the jacket or brand the jacket as an exploring exclusive item. In 1975 and 1976, the BSA attempted to salvage the Blue Jack by marketing it to Cub Scouters since it matched the blue uniform of the Cub Scouts. This effort also failed as by now the only jacket that Scouts and Scouters wanted to wear was the Red Jack. At the end of 1976, the Blue Jack shirt was retired. Another attempt to capitalize on the popularity of the Red Jack occurred in 1970 with the launch of the BSA's Boy Power 76 national membership campaign. The idea was to get a representative one-third of all scout-aged youth into a scouting program by the time of the nation's bicentennial in 1976. To reward scout executives who met their Boy Power 76 goals and also got at least 40% of their units to subscribe to Boy's Life, a special red and green jack shirt, which became known as the Pedro Jacket, was introduced. This distinctive article of clothing was named after the famed mascot of Boy's Life magazine, Pedro the Male Burrow, and his name appeared on the tag inside of the jacket. The Pedro Jack shirt was also designed and manufactured by Woolrich, and Woolrich, not wanting to miss out on this opportunity, went on to develop wool blankets and other 100% wool items with this distinctive woodland or Pedro design incorporated into them. In the collection of the National Scouting Museum, we have many samples of the various Red Jacks people have donated to the collection. For those of you who've been around Philmont for a while, this is Betty Brown's Red Jack. Betty worked for Philmont for about 40 years and referred to herself as the map folder, telling people that her first job on the ranch was to fold maps. To keep the legend alive, it's reported that at her, at her retirement party, they had her fold maps as a final act to show she still had it in her. The collection has three jackets from the Stokes family. Bud and Jim Stokes each have official red jacks with the Philmont bull sewn above the left pocket whereas Cynthia Stokes' jacket is a Pendleton wool shirt. Note the open pockets at the bottom of the jacket instead of the two-button breast pockets of the Woolrich design. Here is another red jacket that belonged to a woman that came to Philmont in 1981. This Senior Scout's red jacket not only shows his attendance at Philmont, but also has the 1969 National Jamboree patch on the back of the jacket. This red jack was worn by an explorer who attended the 1964 National Jamboree at Valley Forge. We also have this green wool jacket with a deer above the pocket. Now I was unable to obtain any specific details on the significance of the deer patch, however I did find a reference to the patch being on another green wool jacket of a scout executive from Lebanon County Council in Pennsylvania. We also have a plaid wool jacket that has an official uniform tag in the collar. Now, I wasn't able to find anything about this specific kind of jacket, but it does sport a 1939 World's Fair patch. This chaplain's red jacket indicates the owner was a rabbi from Region 2 that was at Philmont in 1968. My favorite part of this red jacket is the solder patch that says, I rode with Rabbi Dobbin. Finally, here's a red jacket that was never worn and still has two of the universal emblems in the pocket, ready to be sewn on the jacket when it's ready to be put into service. The collection also contains several unofficial red wool jackets and shirts, including this Pendleton wool shirt with the patch recognizing the position of president of the BSA. Now this shirt has never been worn as evidenced by the genuine Pendleton tag still attached to the shirt's button. There's also this Chippewa Falls Mills wool jacket. Note the decorative buttons on the sleeves and the smaller pockets on the front of the jacket. Here's another Pendleton wool shirt sporting a Philmont bowl above the left pocket. Now my first experience with the Red Jack involved a scouter in Aloha Council when I was a young scout. He was the camp director of Camp Pupakea, Lou Sequoia. Lou was a friend of my dad's and I can still see Lou in my mind's eye with his campaign hat, walking stick, shorts and knee-high socks wearing his Red Jack. Personally, I bought my Red Jack the first time I served on Wood Badge staff as a troop guide. Because the wool was, well, itchy, I pinned a flannel shirt inside the Red Jack to make it more comfortable. The patrol I was a troop guide for, the Bob Whites, took my jacket after the first weekend and gave it back to me at the beginning of the second weekend. In the interim, they had a professional seamstress sew a beautiful red flannel liner into the jacket, which increased its warmth and comfort by a long shot, and it looked like it was part of the original design. Thanks, guys.
The question always seems to come up with what patches can you wear on your red jack? Well, the simple answer is anything you want. The official guide to uniform and insignia has some guidelines providing for one large patch on the back, the universal BSA emblem on the front left pocket, and other recommended patches for the right pocket, and of course one of the high adventure base patches such as the Philmont Bull or the Northern Tier Canoe Paddle to be placed above the left pocket. Now generally speaking, the placement of patches on a red jack is dictated by personal preference and local traditions. Between 2003 and 2009, the BSA produced an olive drab wool blend jacket with a larger BSA fleur-de-lis embroidered in black directly on the left side of the jacket. The jacket differed from the red jack and was designed to fit better with the Centennial uniform design. It didn't sell as well as expected and was also ultimately retired. Currently, you can buy a red jack from the National Supply Division's website, and the Tooth of Time trader here at Philmont has them available for purchase along with the PSR Black Bull Felt Patch. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week. <laughs>